Okay, everybody. I've received so many emails today pertaining to the YouTube report that was put up yesterday that was stating that Jupiter is Nibiru. And over my 13 years of investigating this planetary system, I have sought knowledge by reading a lot about one of the world's most famous astronomers, Carlos Munoz Ferrada. Now, Carlos Ferrada, I think, has to be the best of the best when it comes to astronomers. And you can go ahead and Google his name, and there is a wealth of information on YouTube and also his very last interview, which was conducted in 1999 and was aired on Puerto Rican television as well as a Venezuelan television station. But Mr. Ferrada, in my eyes, was an absolute genius. And he named this planet Herculobus. And I'm going to go over some points about Mr. Ferrada and his investigations and research into Planet X, Nibiru. And these are definitely things that you need to pay very close attention to because we are talking about a man that was a genius and predictions that actually came true. And some of his warnings were not heeded, such as an earthquake in South America that cost the lives of 60,000 people. But we cannot discount that man. We could not discount his knowledge. And a man with that knowledge would definitely know the difference between a rogue planet and Jupiter. Now, some of his points, and I'll read them to you. It is a red planet which travels an elliptical orbit of a comet and has the great mass of a planet. In other words, it's a comet planet. And that's where he came up with the name Herbuculus, or Herbuculus. It's so hard to pronounce the word. <laughs> but anyways, he called it a star. The star is charged with cosmic energy, as to say it's ratified with radiation, which according to scholars and Ferrata, will alter human health and behavior. It will provoke incurable epidemics and irritability, bringing war to all of the nations which we are currently under threat of right now. It does not comply with the conventionality established celestial physical laws, which means basically, folks, this planetary system doesn't follow the laws of the solar systems. It is very unusual. He then states, it will travel between our sun and a black sun, which is found 32 trillion kilometers away. It will pass as close as 14 million kilometers from Earth. It is approximately six times bigger than Jupiter. Thus, its approach of 14 million kilometers from our world will create a disastrous attraction with the incandescent liquid materials and minerals inside of the Earth. Per per participating, excuse me, participating tremendous internal pressures and therefore volcanoes and earthquakes will consistently erupt and shake the earth. It will end up penetrating our solar system and be visible to the naked eye as well as being photographed with normal camera equipment and not a telescope. In its arrival, it will cause human and geophysical changes bringing much change and destruction. Now, Ferrata did not say that the great final catastrophe would occur in 1999, nor did he predict anything for 2012. But what he did say is that our solar system does have two suns, and the other sun is not the brown dwarf star of the Nemesis solar system. He knew that there is a second sun in our solar system, a smaller sun that is situated behind the sun that we see in the sky. And he did publicize this information. Carlos Ferrada, in my eyes, is the man. You have to trust 
what this man has said. He was a genius, a genius astronomer, a genius mathematician. So we can in no way, shape, or form kick all of his years of research, all of his predictions that came true. We can't kick those to the side and accept another theory that, in my eyes, after 13 years of investigating this planetary system, I could not accept that Nibiru is Jupiter, based on the fact that Jupiter has many, many moons, and they orbit in very wild ecliptic patterns, and some of them just look like asteroids. They're not even spherical. So we have to pay very close attention to what is being told to us. Now, I want to show you this. It states, bear in mind that they, meaning you know who, the governments, they know exactly what is around the corner. Their strategically located observatories and high-powered telescopes give them access to scientific data and astrological and astronomical phenomenon, which is so compelling they feel they have no alternative but to distract us, deceive us, and divert our attention. Who are they referring to? It's right on your screen, people. NASA. And that is exactly what I keep trying to tell everyone. There will be your naysayers out there that will distract you. They do not want you to look up into the sky. Carlos Ferrada stated at the end of his interview, his last interview, he said there will come a time after 2012 that you will be able to see these planets in the sky. You will be able to photograph them with a normal camera. Now, for instance, this man gave this interview in 1999. Okay, it is now 2016. Our cameras are more sophisticated, even on our cell phones. Our video cameras are more sophisticated. So, if you just look up in the sky, take some photographs of the sun, filter the lens. Now, Ferrata stated that filtering your camera lens properly will allow you to see what is near the sun. And as the brown dwarf star begins its exodus, it will be like a shot put out of our solar system. Because right now, the sun has a very strong magnetic hold on this brown dwarf star. It slowed it down coming in, and as it's making its orbit over the sun, when it starts to come back around, which is right now, it's going to obtain breakaway speed from the sun, and that is the exodus that we must prepare for. And that's what I keep trying to tell you. Listen, I'm not a super scientific man. I'm not a mathematician. I've told all of you folks before. I don't hold any degrees in astrophysics or physics or mathematics, but I am a good investigator, and I do want the truth, and I worry about mankind. All of us need to worry. I'm not a fear monger. I hope to God that none of this happens. I don't want to lose my home. I want to see my kids go to college. And I want to get into the orbit of Nemesis and Nibiru. What you're looking at on your screen was the report that Dr. Harrington gave to the U.S. Naval Observatory. I think potentially this information is what got him killed. The man died suddenly of esophageal cancer, but working for the U.S. Naval Observatory, you had to have periodic um, extreme, actually, examinations and physicals. And Dr. Robert Harrington, he had one of those physicals just before he had discovered the Nemesis solar system. But yet, extreme esophageal cancer was overlooked. I find that very hard to believe. But Dr. Harrington was going to publish this paper, and I think it cost him his life. Now, as far as Carlos Ferrada, this man, once again, was an absolute genius. So how can we discount a genius of astronomy, mathematics, physics? The man was smarter than smart. He calculated 
the incoming and outgoing orbit of this planet. Now let's take a look on your screen. And everyone asks, where can I see this planet? Where can I see this in the sky? If you pay very close attention to what you're looking at on your screen, the system came in through the constellation of Sagittarius. It made its way around our sun. When it leaves, it will be leaving out through the constellation of Aquarius in a counterclockwise motion or orbit. Now, this was the paper that Dr. Harrington published. And in 1992, if you look at the bottom of the screen and the long elliptical orbit that's in light blue, it gives another predictive orbit of coming in through Libra at a very steep angle coming upward from our southern ecliptical plane and up over the sun and leaving through Sagittarius. Now this updated prediction is something that we're considering and some of the photographs that are coming in if you want to start to look into the constellation of Sagittarius you may just start to see something with your telescope so for all of you that have a telescope get out there find the constellation of Sagittarius and start looking you may be very very surprised at what you find now, I don't own a telescope I'm not an astronomer I'm not a mathematician I investigate I'm here to get the word out so this should answer a lot of questions and this is very easy information to find and I urge all of you to watch the documentaries related to Dr. Robert Harrington and Carlos Ferrada because if you are going to come to any conclusions that Jupiter is Nibiru before you make your conclusions you need to educate yourself on Dr. Robert Harrington and Carlos Ferrada and as far as the subject matter goes I respect the man and his theory who said that you know Jupiter is Nibiru but I don't accept it I respect it but I don't accept it simply because of the super educated level and intelligence of Dr. Robert Harrington and Carlos Munoz Barada I'd like to thank all of our Nibiru watchers you guys do a fantastic job would also like to thank you for your loyal subscribership you can continue to email your photographs and your video to NibiruPlanetX2016 at gmail.com. And don't forget to share our videos with your friends and family members on Facebook. And subscribe to the Nibiru channel for all of our current updates. And like I always say, keep an eye in the sky. Okay, everybody, I've received so many emails today pertaining to the YouTube report that was put up yesterday that was stating that Jupiter is Nibiru. And over my 13 years of investigating this planetary system, I have sought knowledge by reading a lot about one of the world's most famous astronomers, Carlos Munoz Ferrada. Now, Carlos Ferrada, I think, has to be the best of the best when it comes to astronomers. And you can go ahead and Google his name, and there is a wealth of information on YouTube. And also his very last interview 
which was conducted in 1999 and was aired on Puerto Rican television as well as a Venezuelan television station. But Mr. Ferrada, in my eyes, was an absolute genius. And he named this planet Herculobus. And I'm going to go over some points about Mr. Ferrada and his investigations and research into Planet X, Nibiru. And these are definitely things that you need to pay very close attention to because we are talking about a man that was a genius and predictions that actually came true. And some of his warnings were not heeded, such as an earthquake in South America that cost the lives of 60,000 people. 